I'm Jerry Kokesh, Biathlon World Editor, and this was the 2015-16 BMW IBU World Cup season. Ten venues, nine countries, from central Sweden to the sunny Pillar Tall and Slovenia's Julian Alps to the Bavarian Forest and Italy's Dolomites, across the Atlantic to the Rocky Mountains, onto the Maine woods, the beautiful Oslo Fjord, and winding down in eastern Siberia. Four months of biathlon at its best. Martin Fourcade mastered the opposition from almost the beginning to the end. Aggressive, confident on the tracks, cautious but accurate on the shooting range, and with well-thought-out tactics, he never missed a competition, and the victories piled up week after week, all of which led to his fifth big crystal globe in a row. He is the dominant biathlete of this generation. Gabriela Sukalova, like Fourcade, was the almost unstoppable force. She was focused like in no previous season, winning with regularity, shooting over 90%, and always staying close to the podium. The now flaming redhead changed her hair color mid-season in hopes of getting fast like Johannes Thingus Bo. However, that was unnecessary. Sukalova was fast enough to be the best woman of the season, whatever her hair color. Challengers abounded, with Anton, Simone, and Johannes all trying to top Martin. Marie, Doro, Laura, and Kaisa all stopped Gabby in her tracks on more than one occasion, but all were unable to unseat her from the top spot. It all started in Ostersund way back on November 29th with the mixed relays, a typical early winter week from light snow to heavy winds. A nostalgic victory by the retiring Ole Einar Bjorndalen kicked off the first individual competitions. He briefly wore the yellow bib for the first time in many years. After this initial surprise, things returned to normal with Martin taking two wins and the yellow bib. Dora won the 15K, but Sukalova had her best ever season start, taking the sprint and the yellow bib in a preview of the season ahead. South to the bright sunshine at Hope Filtson's updated stadium. The only sign of winter was the ribbon of snow through the brown meadows. The athletes responded to the Tyrolean sunshine with record-setting performances. Francisca Hildebrand led her teammates to a podium sweep, the first in years for any team. Simone Schemp won a close sprint over Martin Fourcade. Fourcade then reversed the tables, topping Schemp in the pursuit. The Italian women, led by the fast-shooting Dorothea Weir, won the relay for the first time ever. A quick drive took the World Cup Circus to the Pokluka Plateau, on the sunny side of the Alps in Slovenia. The sunshine kept the energy level high, especially for Shemp, who won both the sprint and pursuit. Marie Durand Habert won the sprint, fell, and finished second in the pursuit, but grabbed her first ever yellow bib for the mass start. Kaisa won that mass start and Sukalova regained the yellow bib as her first Christmas present. Durand Habert's guitar playing teammate, Jean Guillaume Beatrice, closed December with his first ever World Cup victory, out sprinting Emil Hegler Svensson for the mass start title. A new year dawned with no snow in Oberhof and a quick move to spring-like roof holding for World Cup 4. Organizers brought in truckloads of snow for the shortened program. With Simon Schemp out with illness, the German men were missing in action while the Norwegian men stepped in with a Bow Brothers Svensson sprint sweep. Dahlmeier was a star of the week, passing Sukalova in the final 200 meters of the pursuit and handily winning the mass start the next day. A perfectly timed snowstorm blew through the Bavarian Alps for the originally planned Rupolding World Cup. Now it seemed like winter for the first time. Weirer won her second 15K of the season, leaving Kaisa and the yellow bib behind her. Sukalova hit the last shot and won the mass start, reversing her dramatic loss to Dahlmeier the previous week. Martin lost the previous week's mass start to Simon Eder, but the yellow bib turned the tables by taking the 20K with Eder second this time. The relays were thrilling battles, with Norway's A-team topping the Russians. The German women wanted a win at home, but were stopped by the Olympic champions Ukraine in a down-to-the-final-meters sprint. A trip to the beautiful, sunny, 
Italian Dolomites and Antolts wrapped up January. Simone Schemp snapped back from illness and won the sprint for the third year in a row. Dorothea Weir has struggled in her home stadium in previous years, but this year she grabbed second in the sprint, third in the pursuit, and barely missed the podium in the relay. The Russians love Antolts and responded with four victories. 2015 world champion Ekaterina Yurlova was all smiles with her second career win in the pursuit. The Russian men capped the week with Anton Chapulin claiming a one-second win over Shemp in the men's relay. An 8,000-kilometer trip landed the World Cup circus in the Canadian Rocky Mountains. The tired bodies were rejuvenated by the spectacular scenery and relaxed atmosphere. It took only seven starters to decide the men's sprint, with Martin, Anton, and Simone finishing in that order. The Italians stayed on track, making history when Doro and Dominic Windisch won the mass starts, the Italians' first ever double win day. Then the Olympic bronze medal team came back for second in the mixed relay. Martin and Marie durand Habert later teamed up to overwhelm the field in the single mixed relay to close this trip to the Wild West. Another 4,000-kilometer flight dropped everyone at frozen Presque Isle in the middle of the Maine woods. The last week in North America can only be described as very cold. Virtually every competition was a physiotape day. Beyond the competitions, one of the highlights for the athletes was riding in the big yellow American school buses. The competitions were again historic. Martin Fourcade won the pursuit in his 100th day in the yellow bib, at the same time tying his idol, Rafael Poré, at 44 World Cup victories. Gabriela Sukalova tightened her grip on the yellow bib with a hat trick of sprint, pursuit, and relay wins, the last one coming in the total darkness of Saturday evening. The 2016 IBU World Championships opened at the historic Holman Kolen Ski Stadium two weeks after the North American Tour ended. Although the Norwegian team came in with high hopes, their successes were overshadowed by Martin Fourcade and the French team. The French team got off to a golden start, taking the mixed relay with Fourcade burying German Simon Schemp in a thrilling last loop battle. The home team settled for bronze. Fourcade came back with another dominating performance in the sprint topping the amazing Ole Einar Bjorndalen by 26 seconds. The Norwegian fans got their thrills when Tyrell Ekhoff shot clean and claimed the world championship in the stadium where she started her career many years ago. Defending champion Marie Durand Habert settled for silver with Laura Dahlmeier in the bronze spot. Foucault had three penalties, but such a big lead that he led from wire to wire in the pursuit for gold medal number three. Bjorndalen came back from a first prone penalty to claim silver number two Emil Hegley Svensson outlasted his teammate Johannes Stingus Bow for the bronze medal. Laura Dahlmeier's clean shooting earned her a pursuit gold medal, the first individual title of her career. After what seemed like a physical collapse in the sprint, Italy's Dorothea Weir came back for her first ever individual medal, pursuit silver. Behind her, the French team's Marie Durand Habert gathered her third medal of the week. After two training days, the women came back for the 15K on a cloudy, windless Wednesday afternoon. Marie Durand Habert and Anais Biscon further confirmed the French domination at these championships, claiming the gold and silver medals. The duo, each with a single penalty, finished over a minute ahead of bronze medalist Laura Dahlmeier. The victory for Durand Habert gave her four medals in four competitions here. With three days of rest and training, Martin Fourcade pulled out a come from behind victory in the 20K, winning gold medal number four. Fourcade's one penalty put him at a one minute deficit but he overcame it with another brilliant ski performance, dooming his clean shooting rivals Dominic Landertinger and Simon Eder of Austria to the silver and bronze medals. The Norwegian women delighted the fans and quieted all the critics with their sterling gold medal performance in the relay. There was magic in the air as they stayed close to the front for two legs, then Tyrell Ekhoff took the lead they never relinquished, leaving Germany and France behind. Norway's golden girls went from afterthoughts to national heroines in just over an hour. The Norwegian men went into the relay focused only on gold, and they delivered to a packed stadium of screaming fans. Ole Einar started things off 
with an early lead, which eventually turned into a three-team battle with Germany and Canada. Svensson's last loop was basically a victory lap ahead of Germany and the stunning bronze medal by Canada. The women's mass start produced another gold medal for France by Marie durand Haber, who led from start to finish, unchallenged without missing a shot. The French star topped the medal rankings with six medals, including three gold medals. The battle for silver came down to the last few hundred meters with Germany's Laura Dahlmeier taking silver and Kaisa Makarainen with the bronze medal. Martin Fourcade went after his fifth gold medal in the mass start. One person, young hometown favorite Johannes Thingisbo, battled the yellow bib over the final loop and grabbed the gold medal with 20,000 fans screaming at the top of their lungs. Adding to their excitement was Ole Einar Bjorndalen's bronze medal, his fourth medal of these world championships, and a spectacular ending to the world championships in Oslo. After a 4,400 kilometer journey from Oslo, the World Cup circus arrived in Kantimansisk for the last act, World Cup 9. Fatigue was prevalent after the two-week world championships, but just three competitions remained in this city on the edge of the endless Siberian plains still deep in winter. The women's sprint took stage first with Kaisa, fresh off her mass start bronze medal, claiming victory in Conti for the second year in a row. There have been some worse periods uh, during the season, but uh, all in all I'm fourth in the total World Cup right now. so. It hasn't been that bad, so it's only three girls who have had a better season than me in, in the total points, so I guess I have to be quite happy anyway. The yellow bib, Gabriela Sukalova shot clean, but tangled skis with another athlete as she left the shooting range, losing precious seconds and composure, but still finishing three seconds behind Kaisa. Still, the Czech star claimed the sprint globe and enough points to almost sew up the World Cup total score title. Doro rounded out the podium. The first of the small globes were awarded to Gabby, Doro, and the German women. The men's sprint provided two shocks. Clean shooting Julian Eberhard led from start to finish in his first ever victory, topping Simone Schemp and Arne Piper. What are the feelings after a first win in World Cup? Uh, the feelings are very good. Uh, I had a good day today and uh, my shape is very good. And so I knew if, uh, if I shoot 0-0, zero, zero, I had a chance to win. Juan Martin, the man in yellow, with four penalties, scored just a single World Cup point in 40th place. However, Martin left with a smile on his face after picking up the Crystal Globes for the individual and sprint, while Norway claimed the relay and mixed relay titles. With a mild, almost windless afternoon turning into evening, the women's pursuit was one of the most hotly contested of the season with six women led by Marie durand Haber, leaving the final stage within four seconds, all hoping for the win. An aggressive move by Kaisa gave her a slight advantage that she carried to the finish. durand Haber finished second and Dorothea Weir third. Sukalova finished fourth, but won the small globe for the pursuit and most importantly, secured the big crystal globe for the World Cup total score. I'm so happy. It's one of the biggest dreams of my life, so it's it's a very emotional moment, and I think I will never forget this moment. The German men continued their end-of-season resurgence in the pursuit, with Simon Schemp overtaking the usually speedy Johannes Thingisbo in the final loop for the victory. Bo actually shot better than Schemp with one penalty to the Germans' three, but Schemp was much faster on the tracks than Bo. Yeah, I felt good on, on skis and yesterday I had really good ski time and my legs are, are good at the end of the season and so I'm really happy with this victory. Eric Lesser in third gave Germany a second spot on the podium while teammate Benedict Dahl finished fifth. Martin Fourcade had already won the Pursuit Globe and elected not to start after his disappointing 40th place in the sprint. 
After several virtually windless days, gale force winds hit Kantimansisk on mass start day, with trees and light poles snapping from the strain. With the safety of both the athletes and fans in mind, the competition jury decided to end the season, canceling the scheduled mass starts. The final small crystal globes went to Martin and Gabby for the mass start, and of course, they both received the big prizes, the big crystal globes for winning the World Cup total score. As darkness fell over the stadium in Kantimansisk, Martin Fourcade packed up his huge collection of crystal globes, symbolizing his season of domination, thinking only about some rest after missing just a single competition all season long. The rest of the men were already thinking about how to stop him next season. The total score winner Gabriela Sukalova beamed with success, winning four of the five globes possible, only Dorothea Weir taking the individual title. Despite her late season struggles, it was Sukalova's year to shine and those who finished behind her would have to wait until next year. The season is over and as always, every competition was filled with all the drama of a television soap opera. Hard hitting action, finish line battles, disappointments and successes, sportsmanship and hugs for friends and rivals, tears and exhaustion at the finish line, and the smiles of victory. This was Biathlon at its best.